right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Tonight, police investigating a double murder and suicide in West St. Louis County. Till we end violence in the home, we are never going to end violence in schools or on the streets. And tonight, unauthorized hires. Why 16 sheriff's deputies must immediately halt their work. And we hear the sheriff's side of the story. A stormy start and finish to the weekend ahead. The most likely time you'll hear thunder this weekend. We start tonight with breaking news out of North St. Louis County. In just the last few minutes, an Amber Alert has been canceled. A two-year-old girl has been found safe after she was taken by two men in ski masks. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. This happened about two hours ago at an apartment complex on Marbella Drive that's just north of 270 off Bell Fountain Road. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay just got an update from police. Mike and Ann, we spoke with St. Louis County Police less than five minutes ago. The biggest thing we want to share is that these two suspects that took this two-year-old girl who is now safe, they are still at large. The two-year-old we know was found about 30 minutes ago in Ferguson. She's being transported to a hospital right now, but those two suspects again are at large. I'm going to step aside so you can see just how active this scene is right now. There is over a dozen police cars. We got here about 30 minutes ago, and this is how the scene looked. Now, police do tell us that around 730, they were dispatched to an abduction and home evasion here on Marbella Drive. That's when police say the two suspects who were in ski mask and dark clothes exited the vehicle and then abducted, went into the home and abducted the little girl. They departed on scene. St. Louis County Police got into action and called in all their resources and everything available. And again, less than 10 minutes ago, right before we came on the air. That little girl, two year old Alaya Abernathy, is found safe. She's being transported to a hospital in Ferguson right now where she was found. Now, we did actually were able to speak with the grandmother just moments when we got on the scene. She was obviously very shaken up. There were two other people in the home when these two men invaded this home trying to take this little girl. Listen to what the grandmother said took place. They kicked in the door and pissed with my daughter and she was, they said she was holding her baby and they was trying to grab my back. You know, they kept hitting her until she finally let the baby go. This is still an ongoing investigation. St. Louis County Police says their crimes against person division is taking over. Again, we want to reiterate this two year old is thankfully found safe. She was found in Ferguson being transported to a hospital now to be checked. But these two suspects are still at large. We will keep you updated on air and online as soon as we learn more information. Live in St. Louis County, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. Also developing tonight, St. Louis County Police investigating what they believe to be a double murder suicide. Police were called to a home on Glandor Drive just south of Manchester Road between 141 and Weidman Road this morning for a welfare check. They, there they found three adults shot to death. Police believe a man shot two women before shooting himself. Neighbors say they heard the sirens, but never imagined something like this. I was working from home and I saw a couple of police cars and ambulance, which I thought maybe they came, someone called to take to a hospital or something. The victims' names have not yet been identified. If you do have any information about this case, you're asked to call the anonymous Crime Stoppers tip line. That number is 866-371-TIPS. A comfortable August night across St. Louis. We don't say that too often. Things will be heating up for the weekend, though, and some of you could wake up to some more rain showers. Let's get to weather first. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell. You know, we, we do see the chance of a few showers or maybe a rumble of thunder tomorrow, but it really looks like it'll be tomorrow night about this time when we actually see some thunderstorms trying to move into the area. It is a beautiful evening. What a gorgeous night over at the Missouri Botanical Garden. Chihuly in the garden. A lot of folks out there enjoying that tonight as it kind of winds down for the evening. While it's winding down over at the garden, the storms are flaring up from Iowa back into Minnesota. Now, the biggest concentration has been up into Minnesota, but there is some development and this area is going to tend to slide towards the east and east southeast, which means it will impact northeast Missouri as well as west central portion.
portions of Illinois. Most likely, these showers will be still well north of St. Louis and in a decaying or dying mode early tomorrow morning. So there is an early rain chance north and northeast of St. Louis Friday, but really we're thinking it's about this time tomorrow night and into the early hours Saturday when we have showers and thunderstorms rolling through. They should be a little more impressive and more widespread. And then there are more storm chances arriving by Sunday afternoon and Sunday night. We'll break it all down just a few minutes in. Tonight, a St. Charles County teen is recovering after being rescued from a grain bin. It happened this afternoon at a family farm and orchard farm. Several fire departments, including members of the Urban Search and Rescue Task Force, responded. This is a very unique patient care situation. This is not a standard uh, type of call by any stretch of the imagination. And those folks that serve on that Urban Search and Rescue team, they're trained in a variety of rescue tactics, one of which being farm implement rescue. It took crews 30 minutes to pull the teen out. They were airlifted to a pediatric trauma center with what we're told were very serious injuries. Tonight, St. Louis police are investigating after a body was found in a dumpster near downtown. The discovery was made just after 5 tonight in the 1100 block of Tucker. That's near the intersection of coal. The medical examiner is working to determine a cause of death. Tonight, more than a dozen sheriff's deputies just brought on in the city of St. Louis are now being told not to report to work. This after a judge announced Sheriff Vernon Betts did not follow proper procedure to hire those deputies. Brent Solomon is live outside the Carnahan Courthouse to break down these concerns. Brent. And Mike, when a new deputy wants to work for the city of St. Louis, he or she has to fill out an application, go through a background check, be vetted by judges. That's state law. Now, a judge is calling out the sheriff, calling his new hires, quote, unauthorized. Take a look at the judge's order, stating that Sheriff Vernon Betts' new deputy hires, quote, are immediately prohibited from holding themselves as employees of the sheriff's department. And when you are sworn in as a law enforcement officer in the city of St. Louis to protect judges and to protect uh, court goers, you have to have qualified deputies experienced deputies and trustworthy deputies. Former Deputy Alfred Montgomery lost a 2020 election against the sheriff, but is running again next year for the seat. They were given badges. They were given firearms. Some deputies may have felons. Some deputies had, may have misdemeanors. That we don't know because they were not properly hired. They didn't go through the background check and they did not go before the judges. Betts attorney Jimmy Edwards declined an interview, but said the sheriff thought he had emergency powers to bring on the 16 new deputies the way he did. He says the matter is a misunderstanding and that he plans to get in compliance with the judge's order. It comes as a jury sided with the sheriff Thursday on a separate matter. A longtime deputy filed suit against Betts, claiming he retaliated against him by demanding he cut off his beard, which he wears due to a skin condition. The deputy claimed Betts only made that demand after he appeared in court for a subpoena and another deputy's discrimination complaint. He feels as though he can, do, he can do what he wants. I spoke with a current deputy who asked not to be identified. If you're going to hire 16 people, you have to do it the correct way. We have to do our job the correct way all the time. So who are you to be exempt? Vernon Betts has been here for six years. He knows better. He knows the process. The sheriff has four days to go through the proper protocols to get his new deputies hired. I spoke with his attorney who told me that they plan to meet that deadline. We're live in St. Louis tonight. Brent Solomon, five on your side. Tonight, a 12 year old is in custody after police say he and two teenagers carjacked an employee in front of the St. Louis Justice Center overnight. Those two teen suspects are still on the run. The victim was robbed at gunpoint. Police say the trio took off in his silver Nissan Altima. Officers located the car a short time later near 10th and Cass. That's where they arrested the 12 year old, but the other two teens got away. Tonight, investigators in Lincoln County are asking for your help in solving a 32 year old cold case. Today, they released a photo of what Charles Arlen Henderson would look like today. Back in the summer of 1991, the 11 year old was last seen riding his bike near Moscow Mills at his home near his home, and his bike was found months later 
abandoned in a farm field five miles away. Investigators are also asking for information about Bob and Joy Leonard. Joy was Arlen's sister. Bob murdered her and three others in 2000 before dying by suicide. Tonight, a portion of Chippewa is back open in South St. Louis. Crews have been working over the last 24 hours to fix a 12-inch water main break that caused the road to buckle near McCausland and River de Pair. Water main breaks have plagued the city this summer. In June, the Board of Aldermen approved a water rate hike for the first time in 13 years to help fix and maintain the city's aging infrastructure. The Missouri State Fair opened today. The annual showcase of crops and livestock comes during a bad year for agriculture. Up until recent storms and heavy rains, many Missouri counties have been dealing with drought conditions. That drought situation has an effect all the way into the winter. Uh, there's not going to be as much fall pasture as what we normally have. There's not going to be as much hay this winter. So the effects of that drought is going to be ongoing for some time. We got 40 head of mama cows and it's a struggle to keep them on grass and keep them happy. The state fair in Sedalia runs through August 20th. Governor J.B. Pritzker cut the ribbon to officially open the Illinois State Fair today. The amusement rides were unable to open until tonight because state inspections were delayed by yesterday's rain. The fairgrounds in Springfield will host livestock shows, live entertainment, and fair food for the next 10 days. Tomorrow is Agriculture Day. Paradise on fire. Tonight, more death and destruction in Hawaii. Tonight, we hear from a local family stuck on the island. This place holds a special place in our heart. Strange sightings over the show me stake. It was frightening, actually, to me. I knew it truly was a UFO. The Missouri small town claiming to be a hot spot for out of this world tourists. We've been a hot spot for stormy weather over the last six weeks. The challenges we have pinning down the storm threats heading into the weekend. Tonight, the death toll from raging fires in Hawaii has surpassed 50 people. That number is expected to rise as the frantic search for people still missing continues. Many areas across the island of Maui are now rubble and ash. The firestorm, fueled by hurricane force winds, has pushed hundreds into shelters. Most showed up with the only things they could carry during their rush to safety. The gas station blew up at like three, and since then we've just been trying to outrun a fire. Local people have lost everything. They've lost their house, they've lost their animals, and it's, it's devastating. President Biden has approved a disaster declaration. The National Guard has been called in to conduct water drops and search for survivors. Tonight, a Chesterfield family has been left stranded on the island for the foreseeable future. They're scheduled to come home on Monday, but are unsure that will happen with the roads in and out of town closed. The real tough problem is if we leave this area, we can't get back in and we have no place to stay. We're kind of in a bind here. We have no place to go. The only place to go is the airport, and the airport's got, I don't know, 20,000 people sitting in it, and there's no flights available. So how am I supposed to take three kids there, three little kids, to uh, deal with that situation? The family asked us not to use their last names. The, they say the annual trip to Hawaii has been a family tradition since 2006. It's an age-old question. Are we alone in the universe? Some claim a small Missouri town is a beacon for out-of-this-world visitors for the past half century. In fact, it's been named the UFO capital of the Show Me State. Five on your sides, Holden Kerwicki traveled to Piedmont, about three hours south of St. Louis, and discovered sightings are still happening to this day. In small towns across the Show Me State, seemingly everyone has a story. My grandpa loved to spin a tall tale. But in Piedmont, Missouri, the stories are out of this world. I mean, I had a gentleman sit at my desk and cry because of how things that he's seen have illuminated and changed his life over the years. My husband and I moved back here a few years ago. He swears he saw some kind of lights. The Wayne County community was named the UFO capital of Missouri after a 1973 incident that drew national attention. There were over 500 reported sightings of UFOs in the area. One uh, resident said that uh, if they had to estimate half of the residents had seen something in the sky. Clearwater Lake be kind of becomes another 
kind of epicenter of this is there's people who are reporting seeing lights above the water. They're reporting seeing lights under the water. The FBI came in back then and um, tons of military, the Air Force bases, just, just trying to prove that it was something explainable. Over the years, many of these sightings have been determined to be aircraft or even weather phenomenon, but that doesn't explain why many sightings are still occurring today near Clearwater Lake. There was this light, it was like a star, and it just sat up there above the light, we're watching it, and all of a sudden it went, do, 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 do. I went whoop, 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 and went to the side, went back. I'm like, what are we watching? It was zigzagging and acting very odd. Dr. Darren Bauer and his girlfriend, retired Air Force Colonel Tracy Edwards, shot this video over their Piedmont area farm. I don't understand it. I know, I've never seen this happen before. It was frightening, actually, to me. It started getting closer to us, like, you know, something tells me we should probably go inside. It was too close for comfort for me. I didn't even look out the window. I didn't want anybody to look out the window. And it was, I knew what it was. I knew it truly was a UFO. It's unknown what exactly they captured on video. Definitely something this guy doing that. What else could that have been? I mean, a UFO of some sort, it'd have to be. I don't see stars doing that. I think people saw something. What that was, I don't know. It's maybe a little self-centered to think that we're the only thing out there in the whole universe. Am I saying that, you know, there's aliens that live under Clearwater Lake that are beaming UFOs up out of the lake? Probably not. In Piedmont, Missouri. Holden Kerwicki, five on your side. The Piedmont Area Chamber of Commerce recently celebrated the 50th anniversary of the sightings, and they plan to welcome beings of all forms again in 2024 in conjunction with the total solar eclipse in April. Hmm. All right, let's turn to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell, our scientist, who joins us now with that weather first forecast. Uh, we have had a beautiful day today. It was here a in gorgeous the day. Area. Yeah, tomorrow, most of the day is pretty quiet. There is a chance, especially north of St. Louis, we'll see some showers and thunderstorms early tomorrow. Maybe in Piedmont, Missouri, you'll see something else. I don't know. All right, out at the airport, things fairly quiet right now. Flights coming and going without too much fanfare tonight because the weather has been so nice. Topping out in the upper 80s, humidity wasn't too bad today. We do have some high clouds rolling overhead, but the stormy weather still well to our north and west. Minnesota up into Iowa, it continues to evolve and develop. Some of what develops and evolves here across portions of Iowa will try to slide into northeast Missouri as we head through the overnight hours, but odds are it's not going to have much of an impact other than bringing us some clouds around the St. Louis area. 79 degrees right now, very little in the way of wind around the St. Louis area. The dew point 67 temperature this afternoon was up to 88 for the afternoon high. 60s to low 70s tonight. Most of the outlying areas are in the 60s. North and northwest of St. Louis, this is what we'll watch. Our weather first future cast, what's left over from the Iowa activity tries to drift towards St. Louis after tomorrow morning's rush hour. By the time this is getting here, it's in that dying, decaying mode. So it's kind of just fizzling out on us. And we don't really expect much here tomorrow during the afternoon. It'll be a steamy afternoon, low 90s for highs. But we're thinking we're going to miss most of the showers and thunderstorms through the afternoon into the evening hours. Now, overnight tomorrow night, our chances for showers and storms will ramp up. These could have a bit of a punch to them as they slide in and across the bi-state region, moving from north northwest to southeast. We will be watching those closely and monitoring to see if there is the potential for severe weather right now because it's coming through in the middle of the night. That's not your most prime time for severe weather, right? So we're thinking that the odds of us seeing severe weather are pretty low overall. So we wrap that up with your 10 day forecast and it looks like this tomorrow. Most of the day is dry. Yes, there could be a spot shower thunderstorm, especially north and northeast of St. Louis in the morning. Looks like it's going to fizzle out, then some sunshine. Then it's mostly later tomorrow night into Saturday when we have that next round. That could be a little more significant. But then the rest of Saturday into Saturday night looks pretty good. Sunday, mostly Sunday night into early on Monday for the next wave. So it's conceivable that the shower and thunderstorm action we see over the weekend could be mostly in the middle of the night and the wee hours in the morning and much of the weekend is just a good old fashioned nice summertime August weekend. Well, some kids it's the last weekend, oh, right? Yeah, so we right. need a nice one Back for them to, to enjoy very soon. Starts earlier every year. All right. Thank you, Scott. Sports is coming up.
Well, the Cardinals got one of their best starts of the year from a pitcher they need to be great. The defending Missouri State champ is dreaming of a three-peat, and pickleball takes St. Louis by storm. Stick around. Sports is up next. The Sports Desk is sponsored by Jim Butler Chevrolet, the Midwest's number one Chevy dealer, 10 years running. Like it or not, these two players are going to be linked forever in Cardinals history. That happens when you're traded for each other. Randy Rosarena has made the most of his post-Cardinals career, becoming a star in Tampa. The Cardinals are hoping the opportunity they're giving Matthew Libertor the rest of this year can jumpstart his career in St. Louis. It's the trade that's been talked about to death, but finally these two got to face each other tonight. Randy gets the better of Libby in the first with a single. But that's about as good as the Rays would have it tonight. The Cardinals get their biggest offensive blast from the sneaky hot Andrew Kisner, two-run homer, then Libertor is going to take over from there. Eight innings, no runs, two hits, no walks, and seven strikeouts for Libertor, his finest start as a Cardinal by far. Cards win 5-2, to two, and against his former organization, Libertor may have started to really figure things out. It felt awesome. Um, you know, I just went out with the plan to pitch my game. I didn't try and do too much, and uh, you know, I had confidence with my stuff in the zone tonight, and I think it made a big difference. But yeah, he kept that all, I mean, pretty low-key. He went out there and just did his job, but that was, uh, we talk about showing flashes of what he's capable of doing. That was extremely impressive. Three weeks from right now, Mizzou football will have a game under their belt. The start of the season is coming fast, and Coach Drinkwood still has a lot to sort out. Mizzou legend Chase Daniel was on hand this week, perhaps giving some thoughts on the QB battle. There could be another battle for snaps at running back. St. Louis' is Cody Schrader impressed last year, but Columbia, Missouri native Nathaniel Pete will have something to say when it comes to playing time. Pete wasn't happy with his performance in his first year transferring back to his hometown and expects better this season. Just after last year, uh, I feel like I don't, I didn't live up to what I wanted to do for Mizzou. Like I wanted to win games in the place where I watched games we won. Like I said before, I watched, I watched the field whenever we beat Texas A&M. So I want to have situations like that here. Two weeks from now, high school football is back. You're looking at the reigning champs at the state's highest level. Of course, CBC is no stranger to state championship trophies by now, but each class leaves a legacy. And this year's seniors want to be the first to deliver a three-peat. And I don't really have to say much because it's, every time it's a senior, it's their story, their legacy, and they kind of want to be the ones that keep it going. They don't really want to let anybody down. Sophomore year was pretty good. Last year was pretty good. So I just want to end out on uh, a state championship. I think that if we win another one, that'll kind of like, not mark it, but like, kind of like make it like, probably like the best class on CBC. It's pickleball madness in St. Louis. This week at Forest Park, more than 500 players are competing in the Association of Pickleball Professionals Tournament. An estimated 50 million adults in this country have played pickleball at least once. Isn't that wild? Of course, they are not playing at this high a level. These are the best. St. Louis is one of 16 stops on this tour, and our town is certainly not short on excitement for the sport. I think in terms of passion for the sport, it's, it's equal to anywhere else that we go to. We're seeing a really, a really good sense of excitement from the players who are here. Uh, in terms of, of potential for growth, this is one of the cities that we're looking at and thinking we can make this event even bigger and better as we continue to grow. But there's an obvious love of pickleball here in St. Louis, uh, and we're, we're honoured and proud to have the, the opportunity to bring our tour to this city. The Phil Mickelson story is the biggest talker online today. According to a new book from Phil's former betting partner, Billy Walters, details the insane stories. Walters wrote that Phil has wagered more than a billion dollars in the past 30 years, that he's bet $110,000 more than a thousand times, and on one day in 2011, he lost more than 143 grand, placing 43 MLB bets. Walters also alleged Mickelson wanted to bet 400,000 on the 2012 Ryder Cup he was playing in, which Mickelson has denied. Either way, that's a lot, a lot of money that I can't even wrap my head and around. And he has admitted to having a gambling he problem. Has. He has. He has. He said he's doing better now, and he definitely denies that he bet on the Ryder Cup yeah. he played in. All right, Corey, thanks. Mom has a day in May. Dad is celebrated in June. The August day celebrating kids and its origins here in the Show Me State. Well, tomorrow is World Elephant Day, and the St. Louis Zoo is inviting you to toss the tusk. People can turn in unwanted ivory items or endangered animal artifacts 
and learn about efforts on conservation and stopping wildlife trafficking. The event is from 10 until 4 tomorrow at The Living World. The Blues at the Arch Festival kicks off tomorrow night. The free two-day event takes place at the North Gateway near Laclede's Landing. Besides live music, there will be food, drinks, and family activities. Tomorrow is National Sons and Daughters Day. The celebration traces back to St. Joseph, Missouri in the 1930s. A minister came up with the idea after hearing a child ask why there was a Mother's and Father's Day, but there was no day celebrating the kids. That's a good point. Yeah, I, I hope you got them all gifts. I, I think there's a Grandparents' Day. There is. Yeah. When is that? I don't know. I we have to find out for yes, you. Yes, there should be a celebration for that. He has a new grandchild. And there you have it, five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Start your day with today in St. Louis beginning at 4 a.m. And have a great Friday.